with AI, we can consume less energy by optimizing our processes. With AI, we can avoid to use energy at peak demand. The first time in history that we introduce so quickly a new technology in production, at scale, in large companies to solve real-world problems. My first advice is learn. And the second advice is make sure your team learn. Welcome and thank you for joining us. This is the AI at Scale podcast, and we're recording live from Innovation Summit Copenhagen. I'm Violaine Kola, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Philippe Hambach, Chief AI Officer at Schneider Electric. Hello, Violaine. Hello, Philippe. So let's start, and since we meet at the Innovation Summit, let's first unpack how AI changed the way Schneider Electric innovates. Yeah, it's, you know, We started this AI acceleration in Schneider a bit more than four years ago, mm -hmm. probably around mid-2021. Uh, so before everybody started to speak about LLM, OpenAI, ChatGPT, and all of that. And when I look at what we are showing to our customers now in this Innovation Summit, AI is everywhere in our offer. You will find it in our maintenance operations, how we can help our customers extend the lifetime of their assets, send less often technicians, get more outcomes. So AI helps us in operation. I see AI in our home's offer where we're helping our customers use less energy, use better their energy, avoid to buy energy when it's expensive. In medium-sized buildings, in large-sized buildings, AI again helps optimizing the way we heat, the way we cool, the way we manage energy in the industrial world, of course, with assistance everywhere. And not only AI is able to help in our products, in our offer, customers to optimize, it's now also with the coming of large language models, agents, to really help our customers in their daily way, the way they do their jobs in smart grids we're providing co-pilots or supports to help them, what we call interactive agents, to help them operate in a better way, use in a better way their solutions. Same for our resource advisor solution. So yeah, AI is now in all our offers, both on operational agents helping optimizing, making things more efficient, and interactive agents helping the human use, I would say, in a much better and clever and efficient way our solutions. So AI is everywhere in Schneider Electric offers. Could you share with us an example where AI completely unlocked opportunities, new opportunities for customers? So many. But probably I would start by it's unlocking, from my point of view, the energy transition. Mm -hmm. When you look at the need for humanity to still have access to energy, energy, as we often say, is a basic human right, but at the same time, stop impacting the planet in a way that we will not be able to live anymore in a sustainable way, we quite often look at the production side of the equation. Let's bring more solar panels, more wind generation, and that's good and we should do it. But we forget the importance on the demand side of the equation. And here, without AI, we will not be able to optimize the demand and we will not be able to go through this energy transition. Let me explain how and why. With AI, we can consume less energy by optimizing our processes. With AI, we can avoid to use energy at peak demand. We can find ways to average the demand. And as you know, at peak demand, this is when the demand is very strong, when it's harder to stabilize the network. So everything that can help reduce the peak demand will go in the direction of helping energy transition. So definitely, the first example I would give is energy transition needs optimization on the demand side. Demand side optimization needs AI to happen. And we see that again at home level, building level, factory level, data center levels. So that's probably not only unlocking value, but making sustainable life easier and faster and would, possible. And would you say we're smarter? Yes, of course, to some extent it makes us smarter, but from my point of view, it mostly makes us more, more efficient. And mm -hmm. that's very important. Let me give one example. One of the big difficulties that our customers are facing every day is the lack of qualified engineers. They have a lot of projects, they have a lot of great ideas. One of the things that stops or blocks them in deploying those projects, those great ideas, is, for example, the lack of qualified automation engineers. Mm -hmm. With AI now, we are not replacing the automation engineers, but we are providing to them tools to write software in a more efficient way, check their software, 
right tests and making them more efficient, to some extent, more smarter, but clearly more efficient, then we are unlocking a lot of possibilities for our customers. Take another example, the maintenance problem. We never have enough field service technician. We never have enough maintenance people as an industry. With AI, we are now able to make them more efficient in the sense that we can optimize where they go. We can make sure we send the right technician to the right place. We can make sure they don't spend hours driving and more time supporting and helping their customers, more time doing their job. Uh, and we do that by using AI to optimize how and when we send them, but also using AI to give them more access to knowledge, give them an easier access to how to repair and make their daily life easier and our customers more happy. So, more smarter, for sure, more efficient, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about the future. Which technology are you investing in now to prepare the future? Uh, it's probably the tougher question for, uh, for somebody in charge of AI because technology mm -hmm. changes every six months. And you have to accept the risk that you invest on something that will change in six months or you do nothing. But what guides me when I have to make technological choices is first and foremost, never forget our mantra, which is we want to do AI at scale, which impacts. And for that, that means we start with the business case. Then, of course, you need to be aware of which technology to develop, which technology to support, to be able to support your business cases. But you should never start from, there is this great new technology, where can I use it? You should always start from what my customers need, mm -hmm. what the market needs, what my employee needs, what that the energy transition need, and which AI technology can help. And then the right AI technology is the one that will help you to be at scale, and that's the most important and still the most difficult, at cost, obviously. And of course, which is also the most sustainable. So we pay a lot of attention when we choose technology and when we decide what to work, to use technology which could say comply or with what we call frugal AI or sustainable AI, making sure we are not using too much energy, making sure we choose the right model, the right solution for the right business need at scale, at cost, with the smallest possible impact to the planet. Mm -hmm. Philippe, I would like to come back on the people topics because you were talking about this, you know, those engineers with whom we're, we're giving those AI tools. Um, and we know that lots of applications proposed by Schneider requires blending this expertise, AI expertise with domain knowledge. So for Schneider, did it require introducing new ways of working to use AI? Yeah, absolutely. Because when you see AI, that's probably the first time in history, maybe I'm wrong, but let's see, let's take the bet. First time in history that we introduced so quickly a new technology in production, at scale, in large companies to solve real-world problems. Nobody has ever heard about LLMs two years ago. They are now powering the solution that we give to our customers. And I take that example because everybody knows it, but there are many others. So the question is, how do you bring technology fast enough but still merging it with domain knowledge because AI alone don't work. You need the understanding, the deep understanding that we have of the industrial automation, the energy world, the electrical world. So what we did is we decided, again, being focused to deliver AI at scale, AI that impact, not demonstrator, not proof of concept, to bring in people with a strong AI knowledge. Quite often, two or three years out of university, with people with domain knowledge. So we start from the business case, the business value, and then we use agile methodology on that we didn't invent, and we create an agile squad or an agile scrum team where we put together the AI specialist with the domain specialist. And that team is not anymore an innovation team. We are not asking them to prove a, co to prove a concept or asking them to make a demonstrator. We are asking them to start from the business need, the customer need, and bring the innovation, the new development in production until it is adopted, sold, validated, customer is trained, tra sales force are trained, and we sell it. So for us, the, the key role to, to, to what we did really have to change is on one side, find ways to merge AI specialists with domain specialists, leveraging agile, and on the other side, stop thinking AI as an innovation, but thinking AI as an offer at scale that we manage like many other offers, not focus on innovation, but focus on what is the value and how do we truly bring it to the market at scale. Um, I mean, you've said it, it's like a fast changing, you know, fast paced technology. So what's one action leaders should take today to empower their teams with AI? The first thing I would say is learn 
and spend some time understanding. There are two hypes about AI. The one which says it is as good as human, it can do everything, it will solve the problem that will never solve and the future of humanity will be perfect thanks to AI. Then there's a negative hype, which is either I've seen, bit, I've seen uh, metaverse, I have seen blockchain, let's wait a bit, it's going to go away. Mm. Or even worse, that the doom of humanity, Robocop will go, it's coming, we're all going to die, and so on. The reality is in between the two. But, so my first message to leaders is train and learn enough so that you understand for your business, for your domain, for what you want to do, what AI can do, and it changes, so you need to keep updated. So my first advice is learn. And the second advice is make sure your team learn. <laughs> and make sure people understand really what AI can bring, how it can be used. They don't need to be the expert of the in-depth algorithm, but they need to understand what it takes, good data quite often, what it can deliver, what is the accuracy you can get, all of that. And understanding what it means for your business. So that would be my main advice. My second advice is practice, do it. The beauty with AI, not for all of it, but for many of it, is you can try it. You can try ChatGPT, you can try to build your own agent in ChatGPT or Copilot for Web or Gemini, whatever you use. Just try, just do it, just feel it. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to ask you a bonus question. <laughs> uh, Philippe Prambach, as Chief AI Officer, what do you use in your daily life, professional or personal life? What AI tools do you use? Yeah, on the daily life, well, first I use, as all of you, a lot of AI tools without even knowing it. Every time I open Waze, every time I open Google, it's actually use AI. Mm -hmm. Then if I'm more looking at AI-focused tools, I would say two things. Uh, I use that word Copilot for web because this is, for us, the solution where we are certain of the confidentiality of information. Then at home, I kind of love perplexity to look at searching the web, where it's quite impressive. And from time to time, chat GPT, because you have to, of course. Mm -hmm. But then, the other thing I use, and that may be because I'm a chief AI officer, but I use a lot of learning. I actually learn on deeplearning.ai, Coursera.ai, and I spend quite a lot of time learning to, again, behind the hype, behind the spoken mirrors, what, how is it really working? And I find that fascinating. So, very end-user tools, and a bit of Python from time to time, and a bit of coding to understand how it works. Great. Well, thank you very much, Philippe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Hélène. Thank you. And thank you for joining.